Today's topic is going to be how to fabricate sheet metal round reducers using radial line development. But before I get started, I would like to take the time to thank those of you who take some time to add comments. They do help me moving forward and hopefully help you also. Again, if you like the topics, simply subscribe. First of all, everything shop starts with a shop ticket based on what we need. After we have that, one of the first ways of developing this cone or frustrum is by laying the whole thing out based on the sizes on the shop ticket. And in this case, we had a six inch on the bottom and a four inch on the top. And the whole thing is 40, uh, excuse me, four inches tall. You have now completed your front elevation view. Once that is complete, we can start laying out the pattern set your compass from A to C and strike an arc outward to establish the baseline. Do the same with A to B. The baseline stretch out is six inch diameter. Therefore, the complete circle is gonna be six times pi and the small diameter on top is four times pi. I prefer working from the larger diameter. Therefore, this one is 18.84, which is seven eighths. So now, from now, or starting at point C, you must measure somehow 18 and 7 eighths on that bottom stretch out. You can either use the circumference rule. You can either use your compass. And in this case here, I set my compass to one inch. And I would have to step it off 18 times and then add seven eighths to it. Eighteen and you can see it's larger than so it's approximately seven eighths. Or the last method which I prefer because it's quick is to cut a strip of metal 18 and 7 eighths long and use that as your circumference rule or peewee tape. It always helps if you roll it also. Slightly roll it. Mark off where 18 and 7 eighths stops. And then you must connect where you stopped back to the apex. Now you have just completed your net pattern. Net pattern again means a pattern with no allowances for connectors or seams. Another method of laying out these reducers is by finding the mathematically the apex height. And here I've wrote a formula down saying apex height equals large diameter times the height 
minus or divided by the large di diameter minus small diameter. Let's work it out. The apex height equals six times four divided by six minus four. 24 divided by two equals 12. So the formula says my apex is equal to 12 inches. Using that number, I've drawn a three inch line on the bottom and 12 inches from that, I found my apex point. Here, the reducer or frustrum is four inches tall. I just put a dot at four inches tall from my three inch baseline. At this point, I must come out two inches because it's half of the top diameter. I'm just prick marking my apex point. So as you can see, I have two horizontal lines. The top one is two inches and the bottom one was three. So now let's begin the pattern. Set your dividers from the apex point to the bottom three inch and strike an arc outward and we know we must go up 18 and 7 eighths some of you might notice that this method requires a lot less drawing In this case here, I'm using the side of the sheet to start my pattern. Again, the base diameter is six times pi, 18 and seven eighths. Now it's up to you to start and stop the 18 and seven eighths with whichever method you choose. Stepping off, which is less accurate, the circumference rule or this strip of metal. Make a mark like we did earlier and draw a line pointing towards the apex. The net pattern will start at the edge of the metal in this case. Now, another method of laying out a pattern is by finding the pattern degree or the pattern angle. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how to verify if your pattern was done correctly. The formula states large diameter times 180 divided by the slant side. Your slant side is right there. And in this case, you have to assume that it would not be in front of you. So if you do use the math to figure it out, I could figure out the hypotenuse of the apex height, which was 12. And we know half the big diameter is three. So 12 squared plus three squared and square root that. And you end up with 12.36 as your slant side, which is 12 and three eighths. And if you measure it, you would see that it's very close to 12 and 3 eighths. So if you finish the formula off, 6 times 180 divided by 
87.16 degrees. That 87 goes right there. 87.16 or 87 degrees would be close enough. As you can see with this 90 degree angle, I am less than 90. So let's just check it and see if, how close we are. Use a protractor and you can see that 80, 85, 86, 87. Now to review the terms that we have been using, we have apex, there's pattern degree, This is the slant side. The large or the big diameter. Small diameter. And then I'm gonna add the apex height. The apex height is always your vertical height from the base to the apex. And in this case, it was 12. Now we are gonna fabricate this reducer. So obviously we need to cut out the pattern. And here you'll see that I added a half inch lap seam, slightly notching the ends. Now I must head off to the roller. The roller here you will notice, or I don't know if you can notice, but I'm the rollers are tighter on one end than on the other when I try to roll a reducer. And I keep turning my pattern till it comes out at 90 degrees to the rolls also. spot welds on my seam. And now the body is complete. Now we need to make two collars to add to the frustrum. These two collars are big end collars because of the shop ticket indicated big end. So here I've chosen a half inch lap seam and a half inch beaded lap seam on for connectors. So the stretch out would be six times pi plus a half for the large one and four times pi plus a half for the smaller one. And here I always notch out where a seam and connector meet. That prevents double thicknesses of metal at certain spots. Always double check your measurements before going too far. Again, I have chosen a lap seam for my connector. So this type of beaded hammer lock or beaded lap seam, I am notching at approximately every half inch. I'm simply tapping my tabs a bit in, slightly in, so it fits into the body of, or the frustrum. Once I know it fits, I can move on and do the same thing to the other. Okay, we know it fits. 
The next thing is to tap all those tabs as tight as you can to the frustrum. Only after that can we go and spot weld the fitting. And this is your final reducer.